Truck back again. Today we're going to be talking about the Open AI connector that we've added in Click. Yeah, and you finally have access to AI. That's silly. Click has already been doing AI for multiple years. So why am I doing a presentation about the Open AI connector? It's because I want you to understand how we can augment what we're already doing by using the Open AI Connector. Today is going to be the first of three videos where I'm going to show you exactly how you're going to configure that connector. So let's get started. I'm here in my load editor and I've got a question I want to ask to the Open API. I want to find out what are three things that click sense and forces for data governance? Legitimate question, and I want this AI solution to give me an answer to this. Settle my question here. I'm a little bit biased, of course, as the click dork. Well, I've already got a couple of connections to OpenAI out there. I've got an OpenAI 3 that says Rose Predictable Unique. I've got a GPT-35 Turbo that says Rose Predictable Unique. Those things are set up specifically um, with some parameters for the use case that I'll be talking in my next video when I show how to call the connector. But for now, we're just going to set up a new one so that we can work together on this. When we say create new connector, you'll find the OpenAI connector down here under the list of analytic sources. And we're going to choose that. And now we get to choose the configuration. Do we want the GPT-3 or do we want the 3.5 or potentially 4? I'm going to pick the 3. Now, the model here, you'll see that we've got a GPT-3.5 turbo and there's a 4. Well, the 4, I'm going to get back to in a second, but it's not going to be available to me yet. I'm going to give it an API key. Well, that API key has to come from somewhere. Well, let's go to our chat GPT where we've been playing. And you'll notice there's nowhere on the screen where there's a key that says, hey, here's your API key to keep calling chat GPT for free. That's not what we're doing. The connector talks to open API. It's the, it's the REST API behind the chat GPT, which is just a visualization front end. They offer that to you free. You have to create an account for yourself. Yes, you have to go actually pay for it. Well, once you do, you're allowed to create a set of API keys. I've got a secret key. Yay! That's really, really, really my secret key. And I've got a video key that I've created that I'm going to get rid of as soon as I finish making these videos so you can't copy my key. Now, the thing about this is, depending on your what you're doing, um, you will get access to the 4.0. I do not personally have access to 4.0 yet. It's still a beta for who I am. So I can't choose that yet, but we've enabled that option so that if you have access to that beta you can call it so i'm going to call gpt35 i'm going to paste in my secret key here and so you'll notice here we've got a number of other options we can choose temperature and max tokens and top p and frequency penalty and presence penalty and a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense if i had my druthers on temperature i would choose 72 degrees with a slight breeze coming from the west off the ocean like it was in San Diego all the time. Unfortunately, I don't have the luxury of choosing that. These, this temperature actually has to do with how creative or how predictable it might be. And so that's why these ones say predictable. Okay, because in those, I've set that to a predictable setting, which is not one. So, fortunately, there's a handy-dandy API documentation because all Open API is, is believe it or not, an API, and APIs are documented. I'm coming into the Create Completions 
section here because that's the one I'm looking for and you'll see it'll tell us what that is it's a, it's a sampling temperature to use between 0 and 2 higher values like 0 0.8 will make it more random while lower makes it more predictable or deterministic well I'm gonna go ahead and accept the default here guess what for the ones that say predictable that I'll talk about when I show you how to call the connector and set up my use case I'm gonna actually pass it a zero because I want it to be super predictable I'm gonna go ahead and accept the one which is kinda of mid-range you'll see top P is an alternative way to sample um, it's basically saying hey we've got all these little you know uh, sessions out there running creating multiple answers um, some are going to be super creative some are going to be very probable um, which ones do you want to use do you only want to use the top 10 percent that are most likely to be right or do you want to get a set of really highly creative out there unique type things well again in my particular use case I've modified that slightly what they recommend is that you use one or the other to try to control which of the little think of them as little bots out there getting their answers which of those ones you want to get have the chance to get returned and the presence penalty and the frequency penalty both are basically in the same range they can go from negative two to two and basically um, they determine whether you're going to allow it to duplicate or reuse words, themes, thoughts over and over if you want completely unique answers from one another. And again, in the use case, when I talk about how to call a connector, you're going to see me actually change those values. For now, we're just going to say, you know what, let me just take your out-of-the-box stuff. I want my temperature to kind of be in the middle. I want the top P to be the default and I'm good to go max tokens there's a couple of different token types one is how many tokens is it going to take to ask the question what text are you passing to it and there's tokens involved with that text so that they can charge you obviously the larger the question the more tokens you need the lower the question the fewer tokens you need I'm going to go ahead and change this from 16 because I know it's going to come back more than that. I'm going to go ahead and just say, ah, give me 256 for now. And this is just setting up the max. This isn't what you're charged. This is saying, hey, don't go over this. Don't because yeah, you could get surprised with some answers. And the higher it is, the more you get charged. And when I say that, I'm talking about pennies here. I'm not talking about dollars. There's no Oh my gosh, I just asked it a question and now I can't eat lunch the next week. We're talking about pennies. I've been running this uh, with my account since very early March. Have done a ton of demos like this, have done a ton of playing, and I'm still under $20. Like it, it's a matter of pennies per time. Easy breezy. We're going to go ahead and give this a name. And I'm going to say that this is OpenAI35. And I'm just going to say that this is my default. So I know I have default parameters. The last thing that it's going to ask me is what's the association? So that if I ask multiple questions and it returns multiple answers, how would it combine these things? How will it associate them in clicks in memory model? Well, I purposely just named that key field. So I know here that it's very easy. Key field is the one I want to associate. I'm going to test that. Yay! It tests fine. And now if I scroll back down to my connections, and yes, I know I've got an awful lot of connections. Here's my OpenAI 3.5 default. And so now all I do is say, hey, I'd like to select something. Well, my data table is the table I use. And now it's asking for the data field. What field are you passing me? That I need to use and I say hey that's my prompt field once I've completed both of these mandatory items it gives me this little checkbox I can check for what fields it's going to return and notice it's going to return hey how many tokens did it take to do the prompt how many tokens did it take to do the completion 
And then what was the total? That completion tokens, that's the one that we're prompting for when, when you're setting up the connection. So I inserted it in my script, and that was really pretty easy, right? We, we created a connection. All we really needed was that API key that we know where to pull it from. And then I do a select, and it generates this output. Notice what this format is here. This is just going to read a standard table with these fields as the value. Notice it in, included key fields so that then I can relate that to there. And all I do is pass it my data table. Yay! So I'm going to go ahead and do my load script. And we'll give that a few seconds and voila! Within 10 seconds we were able to ask that question. OpenAI went out and searched through its web of all its gajillions and jillions of bytes uh, in training and tried to answer my question. So now if I take a look at my data model, I want you to see it is make it is created that association. That's why you're asking it to associate. If I look at this value, hey, the key field was question one. I use the chat completion model. Here's the model type that I use. It took 20 tokens to ask the question. It took 185 tokens to give me the answer. The total tokens used was 205. Again, this one is the one that you're giving it the parameters for. You're saying this is how many tokens I want you to risk of my money to get me an answer and it gives me the answer then. So if we wanted to go ahead and put this on a screen we could easily do that. In this case I only have one question so you know what maybe I'll just go ahead and uh, put it on a sheet. I could put it in a table if I wanted. Or I could say, you know what, since there's only one, I can ask the question and put the question in a text box. Yay! And then I could have my beautiful response text be larger. Hey, so what are the three things that, that helps click along data governance? Well, one is role-based access controls. You've got super granular abilities to allow people things. Oh man, I'm all about that one. Data lineage and auditing. Oh, you know ClickDark's been preaching that for a long time. Data classification and governance rules. Yes, yes, and yes. You can tag sensitive data. You can set up validation rules. Man, I wish it, I should have asked for four so it would have included master items. Well, anyway, we could debate what the top three reasons are. But hopefully you got a good understanding now of how easy it is to use this open AI connector. Hopefully this first video showing you how exactly you create that open AI connector is going to help you get started. Be sure and stay on and watch my next video where I'm going to show you how to call that connector from within ClickSense's load script.